These terrifying images bring tears to many people's eyes, especially to Muslims' eyes. For Muslims, the pain is twofold, that innocent civilians were killed so mercilessly and that such heinous acts were done in the name of their religion. When you look at the 9-11 attacks, uh, it seems to me that it is self-evident to people who know the religion of Islam and its history that this is what I call a hijacking of Islam. If you're somebody that doesn't know anything about Islam, then that's not the case. Um, and, you know, the response is both intellectual as well as gut. The fact is, if the attacks have been committed by Christians or Jews, people in their gut, your average American, regardless of, of their faith or whether they practice a faith, would immediately say these are extremists and therefore be distinguishing it from, if you will, the religion of Islam or mainstream Islam. However, if you don't know anything about a faith, then you don't make that distinction. And I think that's part of what we've had to struggle with post 9-11. With a billion and a half followers, Islam is one of the world's largest religions. Yet the more we hear about it, the less we truly understand this religion as a whole. What does Islam mean? What does Islam stand for? Webster's history of words describes Islam as referring back to Salam, the root of the word, that it means peace. But in terms of uh, understanding Islam, what we understand it as submission to the will of God and peace, these are two terms that are very much different but are combined in the word Islam. So our understanding is that we can attain peace by submitting to the will of God. Islam is a religion of peace. It is a religion of submission to the Creator, and it is a religion of tolerance. I quickly tell them, and I want them to know, that Islam does not condone the killing of anyone unjustly, and certainly does not condone war in the fashion that we're hearing about it today. Peace. Not necessarily the first word that comes to mind when we see the media's portrayal of Islam. Yet peace is the essence of Islam. Then how can we reconcile acts of terror done in the name of Islam? Not a single place in the Qur'an where terror is justified. There is no justification in my mind or in, in my understanding of Islam for what happened on September 11th. No religion and specifically Islam will never uh, find an explanation or uh, justification for what the terrorists did on September 11th. Muslims are by the very nature of Islam itself against terrorism because Islam means uh, finding peace through submission to the will of Allah. So therefore terrorism, uh, trying to intimidate people in order to get your point across or, or, or to take over their land uh, or to drive them away, um, this very act is totally against uh, Islam and uh, within Islamic law and lifestyle. Uh, terrorism is completely forbidden. Muslims do not accept extremism of any kind. It is an unacceptable deviation from Islam. But the fact remains that extremism has existed within every society and within every faith, including Islam. Historically, some extremists have used terrorism as a means to an end. Terrorism against civilians. This is not something that comes out of the Islamic tradition at all. 
It has nothing to do with the Islamic tradition. This is an instance of Muslims imitating the nihilistic philosophies of Marxist Leninists and fascists and other groups who have practiced terrorism in the modern age. In Islamic history, we, like Jews and Christians and all people, have the problem of extremism. All religions have had extremists. All religions have had fanatics. We in the United States know that there were people who burned crosses to terrorize blacks and who believed that to be religious. Many Muslims are at a loss when it comes to explaining how terrorism is committed in the name of their faith. Muslims cannot understand how a person who believes in God, how a person who follows the examples of Prophet Muhammad, how a person who is dedicated to the peaceful religion of Islam could ever be involved in merciless acts of violence. I really can't explain it. I think they get brainwashed in, in the sense that uh, They'll believe anything that the person who is leading them has told them to, to believe. And there's many other cases apart from Islam and Muslims, like the Branch Davidian or the, the occultists in uh, you know mid middle America. It happens everywhere to any race, any color. So I, I really can't explain what goes through these people's minds. It makes me sad when I see it happen. I'm very upset. Despite the fact that Islam's principles are completely contrary to violence and terrorism, and despite the fact that Muslims are at a loss to explain how such atrocious acts are committed in the name of their faith, Muslims are on the receiving end of a great deal of blame, accusations, negativity and contempt as a result of acts of terror. In every faith community, in every society, there are extremists, there are violent people who claim to represent that particular faith or that particular cause, and they commit crimes in the name of that religion or that cause. But the majority of people in that society draw a clear distinction between the acts of these people and their faith. For example, um, in the United States, there are many people who commit crimes um, and they kill abortion doctors. Um, and they do it claiming in the name of God to defend the right of the unborn. Uh, these are Christians, but we don't say and should not say this is a Christian terrorism or domestic Christian terrorism because most people understand that Christianity abhors and condemns these acts. That understanding should be granted to Islam and Muslims because in the Muslim world, the majority of Muslims condemn the acts of people who claim to commit crimes in the name of Islam. Much of the negativity Muslims have received has been a direct result of the tragedy of September 11, 2001. The pain, the horror, and the fear that developed after September 11 led many people to look for someone to blame. Many of those people turned to Muslims. Rather than acknowledging the fact that Islam is a truly peaceful religion, and that the terrorists associated with 9-11 acted contrary to the tenets of Islam, some responded with vicious attacks against all Muslims. Nine eleven happened. I think most non-Muslim Americans turned to, oh, we freaked. We, who the, what's going on here? Who are these people? 
And is, and is this guy down the street from me, this Muhammad guy down the street, is he one of them? I mean, that was a general feeling. I mean, you know, and it's been so, the Americans never been attacked like that before. That's, you know, no one messes with us. Where there was mystery prior to, there was a great divide. The mystery turned into fear. It turned into hatred. It turned into stereotyping. I mean, it wasn't good at all. Muslims were quick to denounce the atrocities of 9-11. Even though terrorism was vehemently denounced by Muslims, some individuals maintained their anti-Muslim stance, making such hateful statements as, the only good Muslim is a dead Muslim. At that time, there's a lot of uh, fire-breathing, red-hot hatred for Islam. And none of it will ever say, you're a Muslim neighbor, you might be, but the insinuation that Islam is, is, is uh, the evil, uh, you know, coming to destroy America, uh, just, it's just a trickle-down effect. You know, if, if, if Jerry Falwell or somebody else said it, it's about Islam, it's got to mean my neighbor down the street. Militant Christian theology is as dangerous as militant Muslim theology, militant Jewish theology. And regrettably, uh, people like Pat Robertson, Franklin Graham, Jerry Falwell, the Reverend Jerry Vines, and many others engage in that kind of exclusivist theology. They therefore condemn the other. And many of them will condemn in the past Jews, other Christians who aren't reborn or born again the way they would like it, but they particularly now focus on Islam and Muslims, and I think that's enormously dangerous. I also think it's enormously unchristian. In such an environment of negativity toward Muslims, American Muslims became the targets of this negativity. American citizens became the victims of discrimination and prejudice. Hate crimes against Muslims grew exponentially. Islamic institutions such as places of worship and schools received threats of violence as well as bomb threats and many institutions were attacked. Muslim individuals, men, women and children were threatened and harassed. On our website, uh, we were not used to getting any hate mail at all. If we were to get any hate mail once a year, you know, that was a big deal. But of course, after 9-11, the floodgates were open uh, in terms of hate mail coming in. After uh, we started getting these hate mails, we responded to each one of these hate mails, trying to explain to people that people should not look at this incident as projecting the religion Islam. The first day after September 11th, we went back to school because we already had scheduled 